الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا ومولانا محمدًا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فيا عباد الله أوصيكم بتقوى الله وطاعته إن الله مع الذين اتقوا والذين هم محسنون قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فسبح بحمد ربك وكن من الساجدين وعبد ربك حتى يأتيك اليقين وقال الله تعالى فإذا فروت فانصب وإلى ربك فارغب صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أحب الأعمال إلى الله أدومها وإن قل صدق رسول الله ونطق حبيب الله May Allah's blessings, mercy and peace be upon us We thank Allah, we believe in Him we rely upon him alone. We ask for his help. We seek refuge in him from the evils of our actions. Dear respected brothers and sisters, today is a very special day for all Muslims. We all should be happier than ever because we are experiencing two different happiness together. We left behind another blessed month of Ramadan. All our praises and gratitudes are due to Allah that he let us reach the end of the blessed month of Ramadan, a month of fasting, prayer, and self-reflection. We are endlessly grateful to our Lord that he reached us to the blessed day Friday, which is an occasion of mercy and forgiveness. Today is the blessed Jum'ah, and today is Eid, Eid al-Fitr. What a beautiful day. Although we are sad that this blessed month has ended, we are really happy to have this double Eid and blessing with the feelings and of solidarity and brotherhood spread in waves to the whole Islamic world. May Salat and Salam be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who describes the days of Eids as the days of joy, happiness and remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. During the past month, we have witnessed the blessing and mercy of Allah showed upon us abundantly. We have fasted from dawn to dusk, refrained from worldly desires, and engaged in acts of worship to seek closeness to our Creator. While we felt the joy of being an ummah in our mosques, where takbirs, and salawats were heard. We also refreshed our awareness of servitude, of Allah, servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with taraweeh, tahajjud, and i'tikaf. We reviewed the past years 
repented for our mistakes and sins, and sought refuge in the forgiveness of our Lord, who is Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. We have collectively strived to improve our character and conduct and to be a better Muslim in the sight of Allah. May Allah accept all our worships and sincere and pure intentions. Alhamdulillah, in the end of such a bountiful and blessed month, we have reached Jum'ah and Eid. Our Jum'ah prayer is a moment to express our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his guidance and blessings. It is a time to seek his forgiveness and mercy. It is an opportunity to renew our commitment to obey his commands and follow the example of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is also a time to come together and strengthen the bonds of brotherhood for all Muslims. On the other hand, today we feel the enthusiasm of the Eid. We enter to a period of immense joy and gratitude. Today is a time to spread love, compassion, and harmony in our communities. Today is the time to come close to each other, to open the doors of our hearts and homes, and to share our happiness. Today is the time to carry hope, gratitude, and the joy that the Eid brought to all the place, places we go. Then, let us experience this joy with our parents who deserve respect and kindness most, with our wives who are our faithful companions and the witnesses of our bad and good days, and with our children who are the little sources of joy and hope in our homes. Let us visit family elders, relatives, neighbors, and friends. Let us strengthen the bonds of affection and trust between us by obeying the divine command of ikhwa. The believers are but brothers. Let us raise our hands and beg to our Lord for our Muslim brothers and sisters in travel and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let them experience the Eids to which they will also reach in peace, tranquility, and security. Dear respected brothers and sisters, during this blessed month of Ramadan, we have dedicated ourselves to acts of worship and seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But now, there is a crucial duty and responsibility in front of each of us. To extend this spiritual psychology reached in Ramadan and positive traits gained to the rest of the year without being careless and negligent. Therefore, the main objective is to reach the next Ramadan with the same spirituality by preserving the consciousness of servitude we strengthened during Ramadan and thus to spend our whole lives in the spirit of Ramadan. Even if that is not possible in full, it is extremely valuable to strive for it. The busyness of the world can sometimes make our duty of servitude forget and cause us to connect to, to the worldly life with great ambition. This can make us lose connection with our Lord, one another, and ourselves as well. Here, the month of Ramadan that we left behind was a vital opportunity to turn this around. Ramadan was the most valuable harvest season of our lives. 
and, op and an opportunity of material and spiritual renewal for all of us. It was a hope, excitement, and awakening for Muslims. But not knowing the value of Ramadan after it has reached us is to be deprived of a great treasure. For this reason, each and every Muslim should see the blessed Ramadan that visits us every year as a one-month school that is bestowed upon us to teach us how to live our lives. If we pass this school and can benefit from it properly, inshallah, we will have the opportunity to continue the good tra traits we have gained for life after Ramadan. On the occasion of the month of Ramadan, when we are aware once more again of the fact that we are helpless servants, that we are in need of the mercy of Allah, and that how much His mercy and grace are abundant, then we always put our spiritual life in order and develop a proper Muslim character. We always live carefully and in control, do as, as much good as we can. In this case, we also refrain from doing evil to both our own soul and other beings. We become aware of our duties and responsibilities. We raise towards being a good person. With the consciousness of servitude, we get rid of heedlessness and forgetfulness and pray to our Lord. Therefore, let us carry positive lessons and blessings with us beyond Ramadan and continue to strive for righteousness and piety in our lives. May the divine abundance and sincerity of the month of Ramadan always be in our lives. After leaving Ramadan behind, we should not allow the worldly life being no more than play and amusement to damage and break our spirituality. Let us remember a word of our beloved Prophet والسلام, He said, when the month of Ramadan starts, the gates of the heavens are opened and the gates of hell are closed and the devils are chained. Dear respected brothers and sisters, let us strive so that the gates of Jannah remain open by keeping alive our religious and moral awareness in all our affairs. Being Muslim is a lifelong journey of piety, not just for certain times. Worships such as prayer and fasting are performed and completed within a certain period of time. However, servitude to our Lord must continue until the last breath, without breaks, without interruption. Continuousness is the essence of servitude. When our beloved Prophet was asked, what is the best deed? The Prophet والسلام, replied, the best deed in the sight of Allah is the one that is continuous, even if, even if it is little. Just as light and continuous rain brings life to the soil, a lifelong awareness of servitude and obedience to Allah and a life centered on worship constantly nourish and resurrect the spiritual world of a person. In this respect, it is not befitting for a believer to pay attention to our servitude duties in Ramadan and to become complacent in the following months. As a matter of fact, our Lord warns us against being dragged into such a mistake. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَلَّتِي نَقَضَتْ غَزْلَهَا مِنْ بَعْدِ قُوَّةٍ أَنْكَاثَا Do not be like the woman who untied her thread after twisting it strongly. According to the narration, the name of this woman was Raita bin Tisa'id. This woman twisted a rope all day and then broke it. So she would have wasted the whole day. This state of her is essentially a Quranic, Quranic warning 
and example that Muslims should not lose the beautiful qualities gained after fulfilling servitude duties for a certain period of time. Every sane believer should avoid falling into such a situation in, in his or her life as a servant. Because it is an undeniable fact that it is difficult to knit, easy to untie. It is difficult to build, easy to destroy. In this context, it is very important to continue to friendship established with the Quran after Ramadan. Our life will gain meaning and it will be worthy of living with the help of the relationship established with the Quran. What we transfer from the Quran to our hearts, spiritual delicacy and wisdom every day, we need to look for ways to reproduce it a little more. My dear respected brothers and sisters, let us express our heartfelt gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his abundant blessings during the month of Ramadan. Let us celebrate our Eid al-Fitr in the best manner. Let us regard these blessed days as a reminder to continue our journey of faith, seeking closeness to Allah and following the noble example of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah accept our fasting, prayers, and all kinds of invocations. May Allah grant us a blessed and joyous Eid. Eid Mubarak to all of you. May Allah's blessings be upon us and all Muslims around the world. May our hereafter be heaven, our fate be Eid. Amen. ألا إن أحسن الكلام وأبلغ النظام كلام الله الملك العزيز العلام كما قال الله تبارك وتعالى في الكلام وإذا قرئ القرآن فاستمعوا له وأنصتوا لعلكم ترحمون الحمد لله حمد الكاملين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين تعظيما لنبيه وتكريما لفخامة شان شرف صفيه فقال عز, فقال عز وجل من قائل مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ارضى عن الأربعة الخلفاء الراشدين سيدنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعلى بقية الصحابة والتابعين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذل من خذل المسلمين اللهم ألف بين قلوب المسلمين اللهم أيد كلمة الحق والدين اللهم وحد كلمة المسلمين اللهم طهر قلوبنا واستر عيوبنا واشف مرضانا وارحم آباءنا واغفر أمهاتنا وأصلح ديننا ودنيانا وثبت أقدامنا على الصراط المستقيم اللهم نور قلوبنا بأنوار محبتك وذكرك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم أحينا حياة طيبة بالصحة والسلامة والعافية في الدين والدنيا والآخرة اللهم ارحم أمة محمد رحمة عامة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين عباد الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى 
وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون